In 1939, Bohr and John Archibald Wheeler created the fission theory based on a liquid droplet. The article The Mechanism of Nuclear Fission, according to the theory of Bohr and Wheeler, is an absolutely wonderful work in which I saw practically no formula, was written on four pages, and it read like a novel. They showed that if the nucleus is stretched, the drop is stretched, its potential energy increases up to a certain limit and then begins to decrease. Why? Because when a drop is stretched, its Coulomb energy decreases and the surface energy increases. The sum of these two energies created this graph with a rounded peak. It is not difficult to see that, if sketched even further, it would have gone on and on, but at some point it would break. I will show this now. And further movement is already taking place as two bodies moving one relative to the other. That is, they took on forms, any forms, but they were looking for a minimum amount of potential energy which would enable this process. According to their description, an initial spherical drop is first deformed, reaches its maximum deformation at approximately the top of this barrier, after which a constriction begins to appear within it. This constriction becomes smaller and smaller until it breaks, and the two parts of the drop push away from each other and move into infinity. That is, in fact, what Lisa Meitner had said. In English, division is division. But Lisa Meitner said, no, it is not division, it is fission. And fission in biology is called cell division. And so it divides like a cell. First it is deformed, then constricted, then the neck breaks, and it divides into two parts. There are several specific points that regulate this process. The first point is the starting point, this is the sphere. The second point is a deformed state, which corresponds to this critical deformation, after which is the point of no return, the process can only continue to the point of rupture. At this moment, the two halves will break, and they will accelerate, pushing away from each other. And this energy that is visible here, the difference between the initial energy and the final energy of the two nuclei is what gives us electricity. And this is exactly the energy of excretion that occurs in fission. In fact, if you illustrate the potential energy of all possible configurations, you will get a channel like this. Here is a spherical nucleus, and this system moves along the bottom of this channel, and then at some point, it splits into two fragments. This is the ground state. This is the so-called saddle point, very similar to a saddle whereafter the scission point comes. At this point, a break occurs. This is the theory. But what do we see in the actual experiment? First, we see a spherical nucleus, and then we see two fragments. This depiction is derived from the drip fission model. Until recently, these were merely images. Until in 2005, NASA conducted an experiment on a satellite to determine what division looks like for a drop. 
where the force that counteracts the drop's compression is not a charge force, but gravity. You probably remember the first satellites when the astronauts drank water. They took a glass, poured out the glass, a large drop formed, then they beat this drop with their hand, it split up into many small drops, and then they pushed these drops into their mouths. Now, they probably drink in a more civilized way there, in space. But generally speaking, a drop can be very large, unless there is a force that prevents surface tension. In an ordinary drop that is on Earth, which we drip from a pipette, there is gravity, and therefore the drop cannot be large. Because as soon as it gets bigger, the weight will increase and gravitational forces will rip it off the tip of the tap or from the pipette. If it were not for this gravitational force, then a very large drop could be seen. So they spun the spaceship so as to create microgravity. And then you see how it is stretched out like a drop. A big drop. Until it reaches this configuration and then breaks. Division has taken place and we now have two separate parts. Isn't it shown beautifully? So here we have an image where, with an increase in the deformation of a drop, a charged drop, the potential energy rises to a critical value. After reaching the critical value, the potential energy drops, and it forms this configuration, and then this configuration breaks into two fragments. The magnitude of this rise is the division barrier. For uranium, this is 6 mega electron volt. If 6 mega electron volt of energy is introduced into the nucleus, it will divide. If less energy is introduced, nothing will happen. Why is that? Because the probability will be very small. Bohr and Wheeler considered that it could tunnel through this barrier, as we saw with alpha particles, only now it will be in fragments. But it will take 10 to the power of 20 to 10 to the power of 22 years. If there is no such barrier, then the spherical shape itself will be unstable with respect to division into two fragments, and the deformation process without any barriers to the point of rupture will occur in 10 to the power of minus 19 seconds. The difference is 50 orders of magnitude. Our world holds 6 mega electron volt. This is the barrier. They were looking for spontaneous fission, which was first discovered by Georgi Nikolaevich Flerov and Konstantin Antonovich Petržak, who were working in Leningrad at the Physics and Technology Institute at the time. And they showed that, in fact, uranium tunneling through this 6 mega electron volt barrier takes 10 to the power of 16 years. How it was done is a separate story, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, even though the story is quite interesting. But nevertheless, by the 40th year, it was already clear that the uranium was undergoing spontaneous fission, and this spontaneous fission could be observed if one had sensitive enough equipment. The spontaneous fission, in essence, after alpha, beta and gamma decay, is the fourth type of radioactivity. And this spontaneous fission will play a key role in the synthesis of super-heavy elements, which we will discuss later.